The City of Pauline by Danny O'Grady The young entrepreneur held up some blueprints and imagined the empty space occupied by a huge city with thriving industry. The city of Ellen. All right, fellas, he said to the builders and businessmen behind him. Start with the bank. That'll be the most important part of the town when we're finished. Get working. My sister Ellen was born the year my granny Pauline was diagnosed with dementia. At first, the robberies were small, and the staff barely noticed anything missing in the memory bank. The bank manager was not worried. This bank of his was full to the brim of memories, and these kept the town running. A few small mistakes were understandable. The thieves would be tracked down and stopped anyway. The city of Pauline, a sprawling and amazing place, filled with all sorts of eccentric things. Its industry was booming. The love industry, the comedic industry, the problem-solving industry, the relaxation industry, the musical industry, all these and more could not be possible without the memories provided by the memory bank. The bank manager gazed out at the magnificent city that he and his co-workers kept alive. Little did he know that things were about to change. As one person grew, the other seemed to shrink. The entrepreneur stood happily as the most fundamental memories were loaded into the newly built bank he turned and faced the rest of the open space that was about to have a city built on it. He smiled. Love and relationship next. Great idea, boss. Love and relationship were two industries that were vital for a successful city. And they were usually built first. The entrepreneur could tell that this city would be a great one. When she was first diagnosed, things were all right. She was still her. She was still living at her home. There was still hope. Sirens wailed as police cars rushed through the streets. There, the bank manager shouted, pointing out the passenger window of the squad car that was leading the rest down the street. It made a sharp turn frightening the innocent civilians that walked around the city. The bank manager rocked in his chair, sweating furiously and wiping himself with a handkerchief. These robberies were going to get serious if they weren't stopped. The car screeched and with a sickening jolt, it smashed into a wall. The bank manager was thrown around the car, screaming, that was when he heard the radio on the dashboard. We got him, Chief. The memory he had is safe, said the crackly voice coming through the radio. A wave of relief washed over the bank manager. However, as he climbed out of the wreckage of the squad car, he knew that this robbery would not be the last. Things got much worse when she suffered from a kidney infection and was hospitalised. There she forgot how to walk. How? How this memory? The bank manager could understand some of the others that were taken. But this one had been near the back of the bank, in a very secure vault. At least he thought it was secure. I see love and relationship is thriving, said the entrepreneur to businessmen seated around a table as he stared at reports, along with vocabulary. Wow! Gentlemen, this city is rising from the ground at an alarming rate. 
The businessman nodded in agreement. Well done. I dare say we'll be ready for reading and writing soon. She was then put into a home. Things got very bad there. She forgot to eat, among other things, but she was kept alive by a feed tube. No, 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 mumbled the bank manager. He was pacing his office extremely stressed. He walked to the window, loosened his tie, and stared out at what was left of the city of Pauline. It wasn't much. Industry had dropped faster than he had thought possible. The food industry was gone, as was the problem-solving industry. The religion industry, mostly gone. The musical industry, not in a good condition. However, the comedic industry was still intact, despite the massive amount of memory robberies. The streets seemed a lot emptier. The bank manager nearly cried. This city had been so great, but because of these petty robberies, it was now a ghost of its former self. She had a gallstone, which kept returning. Each time it did so, it became harder to fight it. Reading and writing, gone. Reading and writing, developing brilliantly. The most recent time the gallstone attacked, we thought we were going to lose her. However, she pulled through, barely. The lobby was empty. Papers strewn across the floor. The bank manager fell to his knees. He whipped his head back and howled at the ceiling. A howl of utter shame and defeat. He sobbed into his hands, loud, horrible sobs. It's okay. The bank manager looked up cautiously to see a tall man silhouetted against the dim light coming from the glass door. It happens to every city, no matter how great. Everything has to end. It just so happens that this city had a long, painful ending, and I'm sorry about that. It hasn't ended yet, the bank manager pointed out. The figure approached him. I could rectify the situation right now. I could put you out of your misery. The bank manager leapt to his feet and backed away from the figure. You're the thief, he growled. I am a thief, that is. And there are a few memories I haven't taken from this bank. Some memories you can't take. Why not? I'm proud of myself, said the entrepreneur to no one in particular, kicking his feet onto his desk. The city of Ellen is growing and becoming an extraordinary place. A painting of the city of Pauline hung on the wall. A wave of sadness washed over the entrepreneur. The city of Pauline was one of the greatest cities ever. In fact, one of his relations worked there. That relation had given him a lot of the skills needed to make the city of Ellen such a successful city. He had heard what had happened. He stood suddenly. He walked around his desk and stood right in front of the painting. I can give you my word that I will carry on your legacy and strive to be as great as you. What you have given me will not go to waste, I promise you that. Despite himself, the entrepreneur saluted the picture. She had forgotten most names, but not all of them. Some memories are too fundamental. I couldn't remove them if I tried. The bank manager explained. I see, said the thief. She calls most people by one of two names, ma'am or dad. Are you sure you don't want me to end this? 
this suffering, this shame. The bank manager slowly approached the thief. Pauline O'Grady, my granny, continues to fight dementia with brilliant strength. She truly is an amazing woman. The bank manager punched the thief and the thief fell to the floor. <laughs>